So it's been a little over two weeks now since my last video, and a big thanks to the Red Pill Shark for standing in, and to everyone else who offered to do so. I have no doubt that I will need your help again in the near future, and your compassion is greatly appreciated. But I'm starting to understand now that the biggest impediment to my productivity has never been hardware or software limitations, nor even physical exhaustion from the constant sickness. My biggest hindrance is my own exasperation and depression, because every disheartening spectacle in the newsreels just kills a little more of my enthusiasm for this fight. It becomes difficult to see the value in my efforts, or even the point, when I am ever more convinced that I live in a world that refuses to learn from its past mistakes. And I have to say, the media eyesore in Charlottesville, Virginia over the past few days is one of the strongest examples yet, especially in being introduced to it through Sargon of Akkad's coverage in This Week in Stupid, as he effectively put the history of this fight over the past few years into perspective. I say again, I do not support any sentiment of white supremacy or white nationalism, for whatever similarities or differences they may hold. I condemn these things with the same ire that I hold for the divisive privilege narrative spewing from the left, because any movement that separates us and advocates for or against any particular demographic ultimately serves to hurt all of us in the long run. I repeat now what I said in regards to the religion-fueled bigotry of Andrew Bizod. The absolute worst thing anyone to the right of the regressive left can do is wear the image of the intolerant and hateful Nazis they think we are, especially when they control the mainstream media and all of the sympathy it commands. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely understand where their anger and frustration comes from. With white guilt-addled blowhards like Sally Brown declaring her intent to silence white people from all political discussion at the DNC forum, and with the enthusiastic cheer we heard in response to Cenk Uger citing statistics in regards to the white race's dwindling numbers and oncoming minority status during his debate with Ann Coulter in Politicon 2015, the spreading resentment of anti-white agendas in the media has been rooted in anything but paranoia. But most people don't think or investigate anything for themselves, and this particular shitstorm should make you all realize exactly where we stand in the public eye. It should make you all realize how detrimental any display of intolerance from our side is to our overall progress. In an ideal world, this would be blatantly obvious to everyone. The deplorable behavior and shameless hypocrisy of the anti-fascist movement alone should be a glaring indicator, but we seem to live in a time when most people have forgotten what the word fascism even means. A political philosophy, movement, or regime that exalts nation and often race above the individual, stands for a centralized autocratic government headed by a dictatorial leader, advocates for severe economic and social regimentation, and forcibly suppresses opposition. These are the things they should be fighting, and yet they are the primary source of every last one of these bullet points. As anti-fascists, they should stand against the exaltation of race above the individual, even though it was they who started this fight with the accusations of white privilege in the first place. They should stand against an autocratic government headed by a dictatorial leader, but we've heard nothing but praise from their side regarding Justin Trudeau when he decided to force gender parity in the cabinet because current year. They should stand against severe social and economic regimentation, yet it's been their side the entire time telling people what they should or should not be allowed to do with their own money who have been pushing the fictional wage gap narrative and who have been trying to ram their privilege hierarchy down our throats in every academic institution in the West from colleges all the way down to grade schools. And they should definitely stand against forcible suppression of opposition, even though it's consistently been their side attempting to censor everyone who disagrees with them up to and including violent riots in the streets as they look for Nazis to punch. And despite all of this, the reaction to the events in Charlottesville has been a perfect demonstration of who really holds the power in this discussion. I originally started my channel as a place where I could vent my frustrations on this topic, because most people on Facebook didn't care and didn't want to hear about it. I figured that if I was going to shout into the void, I should at least do it in a place where I wouldn't be at such a high risk of burning bridges in my personal life. Up until the events in Charlottesville, I never heard a peep from any of those people, many of whom I called friends, regarding anything about racism or intolerance. Not when the streets of Berkeley were on fire twice, not when white people were getting their asses kicked for being white in Milwaukee, and the media has been completely absent when it came to coverage of the black supremacist groups in this country shouting hatred from street corners, and when social justice ideologues made it acceptable to segregate white males from safe spaces on the grounds of their supposed white privilege and toxic masculinity. Now, the black Israelites are out there preaching their message of tolerance every single day. Death to all you crackers, man. That's right. Oh, oh, man. Punks, man. That's right. I want to bash your fucking head in, man. That's right. And all you so-called white people, you punk faggots, you going into slavery, all right? That's right. We're going to destroy you, man. By the way, all you so-called white ones, you're going to get brutally raped down here. That's right. That's right. right. You put the death. That's right. And all you so-called Asians, you're going into slavery, all right? That's right. right. 
going into slavery huh, right where you belong. I haven't heard a single word from any of them decrying these things. They just quietly accepted it. And now that tensions have come to a head from their indolent complacency, now that this reactionary response from those who actually do care has become so volatile, every other person on my friends list suddenly has something to say about standing up to racism and not tolerating Nazis. And of course, most of them fail to acknowledge the fact that violence was done to the white supremacists at this rally first, just like it always is when Antifa are on the scene. In the end, I find it sickening that virtually every blow struck in this fight is done out of ignorance. We have one side upholding Adolf Hitler as a hero, despite knowing nothing of what he actually did or how he rose to power, and the other side lambasting his reverence only in equating that name to Jewish genocide, even though they fail to realize that most of the Jews killed were white. Joseph Stalin was actually responsible for far more deaths during his equally iron-fisted rule. But that doesn't stop Antifa from marching with the symbol of his patriotic legacy proudly emblazoned on their banners. So tell me, SJWs, what choice did these scared young boys have? No, they weren't packed into concentration camps, but what more choice does it look like they had when they were torn from their lives and families and forced to march to their deaths? Was Joseph Stalin, a man who could so callously devalue human life, a man who could push children into the furnace of war for his own agenda, really any less of a monster than Hitler? I am disgusted by most of the people in this world today, especially in this fight. We are squandering an exceedingly rare opportunity afforded to us with stubborn ideological tirades and careless abandon. No other creature in the history of life on this planet has ever been blessed with our capacity for rational thought and foresight. No other creature has ever been this capable of accurately predicting significant threats to its existence or afforded the chance to stop its extinction before it even begins. If we can finally outgrow our petty differences and come together for the good of our entire species, our potential will be nearly limitless as our civilization propagates across the stars. But if we can't, if we insist on holding on to these pathetic vendettas, they will inevitably destroy us, and planet Earth will be just one more unfortunate anonymous mud ball swallowed by the death of its star and forgotten. Thanks for watching guys. If you like what you saw here, have a look at my other videos and leave me your thoughts in the comments. If you support my message, then please like, favorite, and subscribe. If you'd like to help this channel improve, you can reach out to me on Twitter or on Facebook with any suggestions. And if you'd like to support me more directly, please consider following me on Patreon. Links in the description. Thanks again, and I'll catch you all in my next video.